Want to speak real Korean from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at koreanclass101.com. 10 phrases to help you in an emergency. Let's begin. 경찰을 불러주세요. Call the police, please. So 경찰 means policeman. Um, and 불러주세요 means please call. So when you're in an emergency and if you want someone to call the police over the phone or in person, you can say 경찰을 불러주세요. Call the police, please. You can also, you know, if you need an ambulance, you can say 앰뷸런스를 불러주세요 um, by replacing the word 경찰 here and say 앰뷸런스를 불러주세요 or 구급차를 불러주세요 which means call me the ambulance, please. So if you can make a call, you can call 112 to call a police or 119 to call a fire truck or ambulance. 열이 나나요? Do you have a fever? So here we have the word 열, which means fever. Um, it can be any kind of heat. Like it can be also, you can also use it to mean um, the heat from fire. Um, but when you talk about your health, like body condition, your can mean fever. Um, so when you go to a hospital, you might hear this question in Korean, and you can say 예 to mean yes, or 아니요 to mean no. 여권을 잃어버렸어요. I lost my passport. So 여권 literally means the book for travel, because 여 is the Chinese character meaning travel, and 권 is kind of the counter for books. Um, so 여권 means passport, and you, when you lost your passport um, before or after you call your embassy, um, you also have to report it to a police. So in that case, when you go to a police station, you can say 여권을 잃어버렸어요. 잃어버렸어요 or 잃어버리다 is the verb meaning to lost. So you can actually um, say you lost something using this pattern. Say, you know, 우산을 잃어버렸어요. I lost my umbrella. 가방을 잃어버렸어요. I lost my bag. 뭔가 잘못 먹은 것 같아요. I think I ate something bad. It's a little bit long phrase to remember, but I think this is kind of polite way to say I ate something bad. Um, if you don't want to hurt anyone, I think this is a phrase that you can use at a hospital or even at a restaurant. So 뭔가 at the beginning of the sentence here means something. Um, 잘못 means wrong, wrongly, and 먹은 것 같아요 means I ate, I think I ate something. So here we have the um, verb 같아요, which means I think it seems like, um, and it makes your sentence indirect uh, and also polite. So you, you'll be able to see a lot of expressions in Korean have this kind of ending, like 같아요, um, so that it doesn't sound direct, a little bit softer and also polite. 의사가 필요해요. I need a doctor. So when you need a medical help, you can use this phrase to say I need a doctor, 의사가 필요해요. Um, here 의사 means a doctor and you can also put any other words too. For example, um, 도움이 필요해요, which means I need a help. Um, the particle 가 should be changed depending on the noun. So if you don't want to worry about the particle because you really need the help right now, um, but not make any grammatical mistake, you can just keep saying particle and just say 의사 필요해요. I need a doctor. 도움 필요해요. I need help. It doesn't sound 100% natural, but it means clear. Anyways. 호텔로 돌아가는 길을 못 찾겠어요. I can't find a way back to my hotel. If you are looking for some guest house, then hotels with reasonable prices, you'll be able to find many of them in north part of Seoul, which has a longer history than south part of Seoul. Um, that also means that the like roads are kind of smaller and not easy to find because it's been there for like 600, 700 years. So in that case, I recommend you to get a name card of your hotel when you check in. Um, so that other Korean people can help you because there are a lot of guest hotels, guest houses which are new. Korean people might not be able to, you know, find it if they just hear the name only. So I think it's better to get the name card at the check-in desk when you arrive at the hotel. 이 근처에 약국 있나요? Is there a pharmacy nearby? So we have the noun 약국 here. 약 means 
um, medicine and cook is something like store. So yakuk means pharmacy. Um, I think you'll be able to easily find a pharmacy in Korea, but uh, when it's on weekends, it might not be easy to find one nearby. So I think um, before you go to a pharmacy on your map, on your smartphone, I think it's better to call them. If they answer, that means they're open. So you can just go there or ask the front desk staff to call them or check it for you to see if they're open. Because many times, half of them will be closed. Um, so I think it's better to check it in advance. And if you just need some simple medicine, I think you can also check out the convenience store nearby. I think they have some medicines there too. 좀 도와주실래요? Can you help me? To say, can you help me? You can just say 도와주실래요? But here we have the word 좀, which means a little, like, you know, a few. Um, because if you use that at the beginning of your question or request, you or request a question will be very polite. So even if you, you don't want to say, can you help me a little bit? Like by using the word 좀, you can make your request much more polite. 길을 잃었어요. I'm lost. So here we have the word 길, which means street. So it literally means I lost uh, what street I am, something like that. Um, if you just simply say 잃었어요 to mean I'm lost, it means I lost something. So if you want to say I am lost because I don't know where I am, make sure to say 길을 at the beginning and say 길을 잃었어요. 영어 하세요? Do you speak English? It literally means, do you do English? But um, when you want to ask someone if someone speaks English, this 하세요, the verb meaning to do, make your question more natural. So you can say 영어 하세요 um, to mean, do you speak English? Or um, if you want to ask another language, for example, 중국어, Chinese, you can say 중국어 하세요, do you speak Chinese? Top 10 phrases your parents always say. Let's begin. 조심해. Be careful. 조심해. Be careful. Yeah, I think, yeah, you hear that um, not only from your parents, but almost from everyone. Like when you're about to do something very stupid or very like dangerous, then your friends or your parents might say that 조심해. Be careful. 조용히 해. Be quiet. 조용히 해. Be quiet. I never heard this phrase in my life because I'm always like try to be quiet. Um, but like, you know, sometimes I feel like I want some parents say this to their kids at a restaurant or at some theater because some parents just let their kids do whatever they want to do. So I sometimes want to say that for their parents, like saying, 조용히 해, be quiet. 얌전히 있어, behave. 얌전히 있어, behave. So, 얌전히 means something like not making trouble, like just being calm. And 있어 means just be like something. So, it means something like, you know, do not make in trouble or like just be there as you are. 숙제해, do your homework. 숙제해, do your homework. So, here we have the word 숙제, meaning homework. 해 is kind of the um, word meaning do something um, because 하다 is the verb meaning to do. Uh, if you just say noun plus 해, that means that do something. So for example, 공부해, do study. 숙제해, do your homework. Um, that kind of pattern. 가서 자, go to bed. 가서 자, go to bed. Uh, I heard this a lot when I was a kid because uh, when I was in elementary school, the internet was introduced to public and I got a chance to use that. Uh, I really liked it. So I, I remember I used it until 2 a.m. even when I was in elementary school. So I heard this phrase a lot. 가서 자, go to bed. 셋까지 센다. I'm going to count to three. 셋까지 센다. I'm going to count to three. I think it's a very common phrase that Korean parents use. Um, 셋까지 센다. 하나, 둘, 셋. Or something like that. So, 셋 here means the number three. Um, so, it literally means, um, okay, I'm going to count to three. 그만해. Stop. 그만해. Stop. So, 그만 here 
is the adverb meaning um, right there, like right at the edge or right there. And he means do. So it sounds something like don't do more than that. Like just, just stop there. Um, so if you're arguing with your parents and if you say something bad, then your parents might say 그만해. Or if you do, keep doing something stupid, then you might hear the phrase 그만해. 장난 아니야. I'm not kidding. 장난 아니야. I'm not kidding. So here 장난 means something like play joke. So it literally means it's not a play, it's not a joke. If uh, your parents think you don't take their um, advice seriously, then they might say 장난 아니야. I'm not kidding. 당장 텔레비전 꺼. Turn the TV off now. 당장 텔레비전 꺼. Turn the TV off now. Um, I think this is kind of the old phrase because I have some friends who are married and they say that um, their kids really love watching something on YouTube. So right these days, they say that they have to, you know, say 당장 유튜브 그만 봐. Stop watching YouTube. Stop YouTube, literally. So I think, you know, more and more kids are getting very familiar with the smartphones, watching something on YouTube. So I think um, the phrase is also changing by that trend. 이 닦았어? Did you brush your teeth? 이 닦았어? Did you brush your teeth? Um, I heard this phrase a lot because I just wanted to go to bed uh, right after doing something on the internet or watching TV. Um, so I often heard this phrase a lot. 이 닦았어? Did you brush your teeth? 10 phrases to amaze native speakers. Let's begin. 10년 동안 한국어를 배웠습니다. I've been learning Korean for 10 years. Wow, you'll be <laughs> so surprised if someone says, um, 10년 동안 한국어를 배웠습니다. First, I think it's because not many um, foreign people um, learn Korean for over one year. I know some people who learn the basic things from the Korean songs, Korean dramas, but not like for over one year, really studying. So if someone says, 10년 동안 한국어를 배웠습니다. That would be amazing to see. 3년 동안 원어민처럼 한국어를 할 거예요. I will speak Korean like a native speaker in three years. You know, if you want to say that you have a strong goal, uh, you can say something like 3년 안에 or 1년 안에 원어민처럼 말할 거예요. Or give more specific things, something like um, 3년 안에 한국어로 강의를 할 거예요. 3년 안에 한국어로 영어를 가르칠 거예요. Then native speakers like me will be very impressed and very surprised to hear that. And I might want to do everything that I want to do to help the other people to make this goal. 감사하지만 전 사실 원어민이 아니에요. Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker actually. That's actually my goal to say that. I want to say something like, thank you, but actually I'm not a good native speaker or something like that. 감사하지만 전 사실 원어민이 아니에요. Thank you, but I'm not actually a native speaker. 유창해지기까지 1년밖에 걸리지 않았어요. It took me only one year to become fluent. If that's true, then you can proudly say that 유창하기까지 1년밖에 걸리지 않았어요. 2년밖에 걸리지 않았어요. Then um, people were very surprised to hear that. 자막 없이 한국 영화를 볼수 있습니다. I can watch Korean movies without subtitles. If you live in Korea, I think you already know that there are some movie theater that you can see Korean movies with English subtitles. But that movie theaters are not that good. It would be great if you can just see them without subtitles. Yeah, some Korean comedy movies would be good if you want to improve your Korean and also um, watch Korean drama without subtitles in the future. 하루에 약 50개의 새로운 한국어 단어를 외울 수 있습니다. I can memorize around 50 new Korean words a day. So here we have 하루에 a day and 새로운 한국어 단어 meaning new Korean words. Well, actually, I think anyone can memorize 50 Korean words if they spend enough time to do that. But it's not easy to do that every day. So if someone says 새로운 단어를 하루에 50개 외울 수 있습니다, that would be surprising because that means that someone is learning Korean seriously. 하신 말씀 모두 다 완벽히 이해했습니다. I completely understood everything you said. 
So if you say 하신 말씀을 모두 완벽히 이해했습니다. That means that I didn't miss anything. Especially at work, like if you say that, um, it's going to impress your boss because, you know, that means that I'm listening, I can understand um, every single thing that you said. 한국어 외에 다른 언어도 몇개할수 있습니다. Apart from knowing Korean, I can speak a few other languages as well. So if you have other languages that you can speak, even though it's not fluent, just like at the beginning level, you can say 한국어 외에 something something도 말할 수 있습니다. 한국어 외에 일본어도 중국어도 말할 수 있습니다. 한국어 외에 프랑스어도 독일어도 말할 수 있습니다. To say that you speak you know, few other languages apart from English and Korean. 한국어는 재미있고 배우기 쉬워요. Korean is fun and easy to learn. Here we have the adjective 재미있다, fun and 쉬워요, easy. So that means that you really enjoy learning Korean. Um, not only to make the other people uh, amazed, I think with saying this, you can also find many native speakers who want to help you to improve your Korean because who would not want to you know help someone who really like enjoying learning Korean 혼자 한국어를 공부하고 있습니다 I'm learning Korean all by myself so here we have the word 혼자 meaning alone all by oneself actually there are many people learning Korean by themselves so if you learn Korean all by yourself um, later when you get a chance to visit Korea and talk with Korean people in Korean, just simply say 혼자 한국어를 공부했습니다. I've been learning Korean all by myself. Want to speak real Korean from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at koreanclass101.com. Top 15 questions you should know. Okay, let's look at the questions. 몇 살이세요? How old are you? So it's very common to ask someone's age in Korea, so don't be surprised if someone whom you just met for the first time ask you this question. 몇 살이세요? 몇 살이세요? 스무 살이요. So you can basically say number and say 살이에요. 스무 살이에요. 서른 살이에요. And if you don't want to answer the question, you can say 몰라도 돼요. It's okay if you don't know. 뭐라고 했어요? What did you say? There are two cases. Let's see the first one. 그런데요, 뭐 했어요? 계세요? 뭐라고 했어요? You didn't understand what the other people say, so you can just simply say 뭐라고 했어요? to ask what did you say? But there's another case. Let's see. 옷이 그게 뭐예요? 별로 예쁘지도 않고. 뭐라고 했어요? This case, you know, someone was talking something bad about you, so you upset, and you can say what did you say? 뭐라고 했어요? to, you know, start your fight. 생일이 언제예요? When is your birthday? So it's also common to ask someone's birthday and Korean people are very good at remembering someone's birthday and celebrating for them. For example, 생일이 언제예요? 음, 5월 3일이에요. Sometimes people will say 음력 5월 3일이에요. 음력 means lunar calendar because some people have the birthday in the lunar calendar, not the solar calendar. In this case, their um, date of birthday will be changed every year. 어디 출신이세요? Where are you from? So in that case, if you're from the US, you can say 미국 출신이에요. Or you can just simply say uh, 미국 사람이에요. I'm American. Or uh, 프랑스 사람이에요. I'm French. 어디 출신이에요? 미국 출신이에요. Or something like that. 어디에 사십니까? Where do you live? So if someone asks you, 어디에 사십니까? 음, 신촌에 살아요. So they said, like, where do you live? And the other said, I live in Shincheon. So you can simply say, 에 살아요, 신촌에 살아요, 홍대에 살아요, to say that you live in the specific area. I love where I used to live, which is Hodemun, the center of the city. 어디에서 일해요? Where do you work? Even though you met someone for the first time, you might be asked, you know, 어디에서 일해요? 무슨 회사에서 일해요? Where do you work? Which company do you work? And sometimes, plus, you might hear 연봉이 얼마예요? What is your annual salary? How much do you make for every year? Or something like that. So be ready for that. 어떻게 지내세요? How are you? So if you haven't seen someone for a long time, you can ask something like 어떻게 지내세요? How are you? 
usually the common answers would be, ah, 잘 지내요. I'm doing well. 그냥요. So so. Or if you want to be really honest, you can say, 잘못 지내요. I'm not doing well. 이거 뭐예요? What's this? I might just ask you, 이게 뭐예요? Like when I'm invited to a dinner, um, then if I see someone that I haven't tried yet in my life, then I can just simply say, 이거 뭐예요? What's this? And you can just simply say, 이거 something something 이에요. Like, 이거 이탈리아 음식이에요. This is Italian food or something like that. What's this? 이게 뭐예요? 이게 뭐예요? What do you think it is? 이게 뭐예요? 이름이 뭐예요? What's your name? You can simply just give your full name or just first name if someone asks you 이름이 뭐예요? What's your name? For example, if someone asks me 이름이 뭐예요? Then I'll say 이재희입니다 using my full name. So it's kind of sounding rude if you just give your first name only actually but if you have the name in English or name in non-Korean uh, words I think that's okay to also give you only the first name because it's easier to remember. 전화번호가 뭐예요? What's your phone number? That might be a, a little bit more personal question. We might ask someone's ID of some messenger program like Kakaotok or Line, um, but we usually don't ask someone's telephone number. But if you are asked because for official purpose or something like that, then you can just give the you know number with the area code. 전화번호가 뭐예요? 아, 공이 3552입니다. So usually Korean numbers have two or three digits and four four. And you can just make some pause between 02 1234 5678. Make sure you make the pause so that they can get it easily. 한국 음식을 좋아합니까? Do you like Korean food? Yeah, that would be one of the common questions that you hear if you're not Korean. For sure, you have to say 네, 좋아합니다. Yes, I like it. Even though you don't like some part of, like, you don't like spicy ones, in general, um, I recommend you to say, 네, 좋아합니다. I like it. But if you want to be real honest, you can say, 별로요. It's also, or, 아니요, 별로 안 좋아합니다. No, I don't like it. 한국어를 공부한 지 얼마나 됐어요? How long have you been studying Korean? So in that case, you can just give how many months, how many years you've been studying Korean. For example, if it is for one year, you can say 1년이요, 3 years, 3년이요. Or if you just started, you can say 얼마 안 됐어요. It has not been that long. Or uh, 최근이요, recently. So let me ask you, 한국어를 공부한 지 얼마나 됐어요? 아, 힘내세요. 한국어를 어디서 배웠습니까? Where did you learn Korean? If you get this question, that means that your Korean is very good. Uh, when people are very impressed you're Korean, um, they will just ask you where you learn it. 한국어를 어디서 배웠습니까? So you can just give the answer. For example, 어학원에서 배웠어요. I learned it from a language school. 어학원 is the word for a language school. Or you can say, 혼자서 배웠어요. I studied alone. So let me ask you the question. 한국어를 어디서 배웠어요? 아, koreanclass101.com이요? 감사합니다. 한국에 가본 적이 있습니까? Have you been to South Korea? So, if you're not living in Seoul, but if someone thought that like you're very interested in Korean culture and language, they will ask you this question. 한국에 가본 적이 있습니까? Have you been to South Korea? If you have, you can say, 네, 있습니다. Yes, I have. Or you can say, 아니요, 없습니다. No, I haven't. 화장실은 어디에 있습니까? Where's the bathroom? So 화장실 is the word meaning bathroom. So um, you can actually ask anything with this question pattern. For example, 슈퍼마켓은 어디에 있습니까? Where's the supermarket? And 지하철은 어디에 있습니까? Meaning where's the subway station? Top 10 ways to prepare your travel. Let's begin. 목적지를 정하다. To choose your destination. 목적지를 정하다. To choose your destination. So here we have the word 목적지. 목적 means purpose, and 지 means something like the location. So it means literally the location of the purpose. So in a sentence, you can say, 이번 여름 휴가 목적지를 한국으로 정했어. I chose Korea as the destination for this year's summer vacation. 가이드북을 사다. To buy a guidebook. 
가이드북을 사다. To buy a guidebook. 서점에서 가이드북을 샀어. I bought a guidebook at the bookstore. 돈을 모으다. To save money. 돈을 모으다. To save money. Literally, it means to gather money. Like, imagine that you have a lot of money here and there. So you grab them and just put them into one place. That's um, the little translation of 돈을 모으다, meaning to save money. In a sentence, we can say 한국 여행을 하려고 돈을 모으고 있어. Which means I'm saving money to travel to Korea. 항공편을 예약하다. To book a flight. 항공편을 예약하다. To book a flight. So when I book a flight, I usually go to the airline's website and buy it there because I don't have to pay extra fee. And for most of the cases, I think I can get a better deal. In a sentence, we can say 서울에 가는 항공편을 예약했어. Which means I booked a flight to Seoul. 경비를 알아보다. To research the cost. 경비를 알아보다. To research the cost. So here the word 경비 is kind of the formal word. So you can use it uh, when you talk about the budget or cost for a big project or a, a travel too because it's kind of the big thing. In a sentence, you can say 이번 여행에 필요한 경비를 알아보자. Which means let's research the cost for this trip. 휴가를 신청하다. To request vacation time. 휴가를 신청하다. To request vacation time. I remember that when I was working at a Korean company, it was not easy to request a vacation because it was not common to use all your paid holidays. So I remember on my first year, I only spent one paid holiday for the entire year. Uh, luckily, I could get the money back for non-used paid holidays. So it was okay though. In a sentence, you can say, 일주일 휴가 신청했어. I requested a week's vacation. 숙소를 예약하다. To book accommodations. 숙소를 예약하다. To book accommodations. So 숙소 um, is made of two Chinese characters. So it really means the place to stay. 인터넷으로 숙소를 예약해서 할인을 받았어. I received a discount by booking accommodations online. 여권을 갱신하다. To renew your passport. 여권을 갱신하다. To renew your passport. Here we have the word 여권. 여 is the Chinese character meaning travel. And 권 means some kind of the book. So a little means something like the book that you can use for travel. 작년에 여권을 갱신했어. I renewed my passport last year. 짐을 싸다. To pack. 짐을 싸다. To pack. So here we have the word 짐. It means something that you have to carry. Like um, if you're on a trip, that means your suitcase, um, like anything that you put into your bag and also the bag itself. Um, so it's better to use it as a set phrase, 짐을 싸다, instead of just saying 싸다, which also means to pack. In a sentence, you can say, 오늘 밤 집에 가서 짐을 싸야 해. Which means, I have to pack when I get home tonight. 여행자 보험을 들다. To buy travel insurance. 여행자 보험을 들다. To buy travel insurance. So the word 여행자 means traveler. So you can also find it in some words like 여행자 수표, traveler's check. And 보험 means insurance. So 여행자 보험 altogether means travel insurance. 공항에 도착하면 여행자 보험을 들자. Let's buy the travel insurance when we arrive at the airport. Top 10 phrases you need to know for date. Let's begin. 저랑 저녁 먹으러 가실래요? Would you like to go out to dinner with me? 저랑 저녁 먹으러 가실래요? Would you like to go out to dinner with me? Um, I think that's kind of the um, phrase that you, you need to know for date in any culture. Like um, having a dinner is, it means something special in Korea too. So, you know, um, that's kind of the way to see if the other person is interested in you or not. For example, like, you know, if you like someone, you can say, 저랑 내일 저녁 먹으러 가실래요? Would you like to go out for dinner tomorrow with me? Um, and if someone says, ah, 좋아요, like, I like it, um, that means yes. There might be some cases that you might hear, 음, 글쎄요, or well, or like, 음, 벌써 약속이 있는데요? 선약이 있는데요? I already have a plan. 
uh, that means that it's kind of known like so you have to be careful like what what's the meaning behind the excuses like if that's real excuses or if that really means no so that you don't you know misunderstand the meaning of the other person 이번 주말에 시간 어때요? Are you free this weekend? 이번 주말에 시간 어때요? Are you free this weekend? So it literally means how is the schedule this weekend? So it is the phrase to ask someone like, you know, what's the schedule? But for a dating, like that kind of situation, it means something like, would you like to spend weekend with me? Would you like to do something special with me? So um, instead of saying 이번 주말에 저랑 같이 있을래요? Like, which means, would you like to be with me this weekend? It's better to say 이번 주말에 시간 어때요? Uh, are you free this weekend? Because it's not direct and it doesn't show anything I love you or I like you but just like kind of asking 저랑 데이트 하실래요? Would you like to hang out with me? 저랑 데이트 하실래요? Would you like to hang out with me? That's direct so not recommendable so you know like um, but some people might like that kind of phrase um, but I think that's more likely would you be my girlfriend, boyfriend you know um, more likely the phrase to ask if someone really wants to be in a serious relationship with you. If you want to have, you know, just first dinner or something, I think you have to save it for next round. Like, but if you really want to be in a serious relationship, you can say 저랑 데이트 하실래요? Or like, uh, 저랑 um, 사귀실래요? Like, would you be my girlfriend or boyfriend? 정말 귀여워요. You're so cute. 정말 귀여워요. You're so cute. If you are not good at Korean, and if you use that phrase, I think people will like it. Like, you know, they, they might think that, oh, you, you, you know, your Korean is very good because that sounds cute. But if you're fluent in Korean or if people know that you speak Korean well, and if you use that phrase, I think that becomes a little bit tricky. So if you want to be cute, you can say that by saying you're so cute. Then the other person might say that, Michael, uh, she's so you, You're cute too, Michael, or something like that. But um, if you um, really want to be a serious relationship, like for a date, I think it's better to save it um, until you become a girlfriend or boyfriend of someone. And then when you're really dating, you can say, ah, 정말 귀여워. you're so cute often. It's better to say it often when you have to, but not too early. 멋져요. 예뻐요. You look great. 멋져요. 예뻐요. You look great. So 멋져요 means you look great, but more likely for men, uh, it means something like you're handsome, you know, you look like a man, you, you look great as a guy, like that kind of thing. You're fashionable. So if you're talking to a man, it's better to say 멋져요. 예뻐요 can be used only for women. So, you know, when you want to say you're beautiful, you're fashionable, like, you're adorable, then you can say this word, 예뻐요. 오늘 저녁 즐거웠어요. That was a great evening. 오늘 저녁 즐거웠어요. That was a great evening. I think that's kind of the good phrase to use after you have a dinner, you know, all over the text messaging, you can say that 오늘 저녁 즐거웠어요. Or you can say that 오늘 저녁 좋았어요, uh, which means literally like the evening was good. Like I, we had, I had a really good evening. 전화할게요. I'll call you. 전화할게요. I'll call you. I'm not sure if people still use that kind of phrase because more often people just, you know, give text message like over the um, mobile messengers. So I often hear something like 카톡할게, which means I'll send you a message over the 카톡, like which is for Kakao Talk Messenger. Um, or something like line hake, I'll send you a message over the line, which is also the name of the application. Um, because you know, calling someone is getting a little bit like special these days. So, you know, but you can still like say 전화할게요, but also you can also say 카톡할게요, like I'll send you a message over the Kakao Talk, or a message halkeo, I'll send you a message over the phone. 집까지 태워다 줄게요. I'll drive you home. 집까지 태워다 줄게요. I'll drive you home. After you have a formal meal, and if you're a guy, I think that's kind of the thing that you can try to say if you have a car. But if you don't have a car, you can say that 집까지 데려다 줄게요. Uh, 태워다 줄게요 means that I'll drive you somewhere, but 데려다 줄게요 means 
I'll go there with you. I'll take you to some place. So, you know, even if without a car, if you can take a subway together to, you know, the other's home, like you can say that 집까지 데려다 줄게요. I'll take you home. 내일 몇 시에 만날까요? What time shall we meet tomorrow? 내일 몇 시에 만날까요? What time shall we meet tomorrow? Yeah, that's a good phrase to set up the appointment on what time you want to meet someone. In the past, there was the term saying Korean time, like, you know, Korean people always being late for 10 or 15 minutes, so you have to be ready for that. I think not many people are doing it these days. Like, when someone says at 4, that means that you have to be there at 4 o'clock. Don't worry about the kind of Korean time concept. But if you're a man and if you're dating with a girl, like, it's kind of better to be there like 10 minutes before the time you set. So, for example, like if you said, 내일 몇 시에 만날까요? And the other said, you know, 4 시에 만나요? Which means that, let's meet at 4 o'clock. Um, then it's better to be at that place by, you know, 30, 50 p.m. Uh, like 10 minutes before 4. Or some people like to, you know, set up the schedule like quickly. So in that case, we can say, 내일 4 시 어때요? What about 4 p.m. tomorrow? So that way you don't have to exchange message too much to set up the time. You just give the suggestion. Um, and then the other says yes, then you set up the appointment. 또볼수 있을까요? Can I see you again? 또볼수 있을까요? Can I see you again? Still, many people in Korea are having a blind date. In the case, you see someone very for the very first time, and you know you might just have to wait for the response um, to meet the person again. Like if, for example, you're a guy and you met a girl, using the kind of blind date system or blind date company, you might not know like if you can see that person again or not. In the case, you can say that 또볼수 있을까요? Can I see you again? To make sure like if, you know, uh, I want to see you again. So I hope to see you again, that kind of meaning behind. Top phrases you never want to hear. All right, let's see what we have. 나 오늘 너 추울 돈 없는데? I don't have your money today. Yeah, I often hear this phrase, which I really never want to hear again because I usually lend money and the other person sometimes say that 나 오늘 너줄 돈 없는데? Like, I don't have money for you today or I don't have your money today. Feels terrible. I don't want to hear that again. 너 때문이 아니야. 내 탓이야. It's not you. It's me. So I think this is the one that I don't want to hear because, you know, like not only about the love also, like something about the work, like you work and someone made a mistake and if someone says 제 탓이에요, like it's my fault, um, you don't want to hear that like it's someone's fault. You don't, you want to know that like how that happened. 너 요새 살쪘어? Have you gained weight recently? Yeah, so 요새 means recently, 살 means, it means skin, but it also means some fat under your skin. Uh, 찌다 means to gain. Unfortunately, this is the common expression that we use. So, um, if you started having Korean friends, don't be surprised if you hear this phrase. 너 요새 살쪘어? Have you gained weight recently? But if you don't like the, this kind of phrase, you can just say that 그런 말 하지 마세요. Don't say something like that. And then other people understand you don't like this kind of phrase. 너 흰머리 있어. You have a gray hair. In Korean, we say 흰머리 which literally means white hair. So it literally means you have a white hair, which is... Uh, I don't mind to show my gray hair, but it seems like many Korean people want to look younger. So this phrase is kind of the notice to the other person saying, you have to do something because you don't look young. If my friends hear this kind of phrase, no himori, so you have gray hair, I think they might dye their hair. But I don't care, but I don't want to hear that. 당신, 해고야. You're fired. Even though it's not easy to fire someone in, under the Korean liberal, I think many people, especially in 40s or like 50s, they have some fear to have this kind of, hear this kind of phrase because they have a family to support. And if they hear 당신 해고야, that is terrible because like still in Korea, it's not easy to move to another job if they are in 40s or 50s even though they have a lot of good careers. So that means that you might not be able to um, get a job for a while. 말했잖아, I told you so. So like, if I have to use this phrase, I might be like, 말했잖아, 
말했잖아, 말했잖아. Like you know, raise my tones over and over. You know, parents should be saying something like that. 말했잖아. 보내주신 이력서는 잘 받았습니다. 하지만 지원하신 자리는 이미 충원되었습니다. Thank you for your resume. However, the position has been filled. Yeah, this is it's not easy to get a job in Korea. Like even after they just get graduated from the college. So I think many people hear this kind of phrase and. Um, the bad thing is that like there are a lot of pressure from the society, from their family about getting a new job. And when they get an email from the company about the result of the interview, there are only two sentences like that. Like, I'm sorry, there's no position for you. Like, 보내신 이력서는 잘 받았습니다. 하지만 지원하신 자리는 이미 충원되었습니다. 우리 이제 각자 다른 사람을 찾아보는 게 어떨까? We should see other people. Common way to say, let's break up. It's kind of suggestion, so you can say no, but you cannot say no. Another common phrase is something like, 우리 각자의 갈 길을 가자, which means let's follow our one path for each. Like, my path, path is here, your path is there. We don't share the same path from now on. 우리 얘기 좀 하자, we need to talk. At a company, I don't want to hear that, because that, like, if someone says, 우리 얘기 좀 하자, that means that there should be something bad. 나이 들어 보여. You look older than your actual age. When I was in middle school or high school, I heard this phrase a lot. But these days, I hear something opposite, saying something like, 나이보다 젊어 보여. You look younger than your actual age. If you want to learn a language, but don't have a lot of time to dedicate to the endeavor, you need to study as efficiently as possible. You probably aren't a language learning expert or a world traveler. You might have school or a job or two. So in this video, we'll give you three ways to help you learn language more efficiently so that you get the most out of your time and effort. Number one, use your time when you have it. The most valuable resource you have as a language learner is time. While you may not have to spend money to learn a language, you will have to spend time. Hours and minutes are a currency that you trade on a weekly basis to grow in your language learning. Language learning is probably a priority for you. It might not be the number one priority, like keeping your job or taking care of your family, but it does have to be important enough for you to invest significant amounts of time into your learning. There's just no way around it. That being said, use your time wisely. Because of previous commitments, you can quickly fall into the trap of putting your language learning off, thinking, oh, I'll do it next week, or Saturday, I'll do it Saturday. Needless to say, a few weeks can go by and you haven't really learned or practiced anything. If you find that happening, then take some time and reevaluate your approach. It's probably a long shot for you to be able to spend hours every day learning a new foreign language, but you can use your time to spend an hour or even just 10 minutes a day, every day, studying or practicing. If you're on a busy schedule, an hour a day can sound like reaching for the stars, so start slowly with just a five minute lesson. Over time, as you learn more and it becomes more routine, you'll want to spend more time studying. And your studying doesn't even need to be all at once. Make use of the little gaps of time you have in the day. Listen to a podcast while driving to and from work. Review new words while on lunch break or right before bed. Even a quick review while in line at the store or waiting for the bus. Together, these moments add up. This way, your little study session will add up to around 60 minutes of practice every day. You'll quickly be able to see significant improvement in your language abilities. Number two, don't method jump. When you're new to language learning, there's a temptation to try out the newest course, app, or method. There are more language learning tools and courses than I can list. But jumping around from podcast to podcast or from textbook to textbook can really hinder your learning process. It's important to find the best method for you, but when you do, stick with it. Don't get distracted by the newest app, or if you suddenly find something faster, cheaper, claiming it can teach you a language with no work on your part. Stick with your learning course or tool. Consistent practice over a period of time is what is essential for language learning. If you hit a bump or plateau, you might be tempted to think, maybe there's a faster or better way to learn. So you search around and buy the next best language learning tool, only to use it for a couple weeks and realize it wasn't really any better than the last course you tried, and the same difficulties you had are still there. If you're learning your first new language and you pick a specific method or course, we suggest you stick with it for at least three to four months. 
You actually hurt yourself in the long run if you constantly switch between resources because you never give yourself the opportunity to progress. Number three, focus on one thing at a time. When you decide to learn a new language, you're gonna be really excited. You have all your resources lined up, a plan in place, and you're ready to go. You think you'll spend three to four hours a day practicing and that you'll be fluent in no time, but that's only for about three days. Then you probably will get a little bit discouraged and avoid it for another three days. And this process might repeat three or four times before you realize that you might be approaching things the wrong way. You can't devour a whole new language in a very short time. You'll burn out immediately. It's better to focus on one small part of the language at a time, either a specific grammar point or a specific vocabulary topic. In the beginning, these should be based on the parts of the language you'll use right away. Even in the business world, research shows that replacing less important tasks with ones that add value and help you reach your goals is the best way to get the most out of your time. As you advance through the language and your level increases, try to pinpoint the harder aspects of the language and work on them one at a time. Learning a foreign language isn't easy. It takes time and work, but it is possible. If you stick to your learning plans and stay focused, you will see improvement in your skills and find satisfaction in using the language. Remember that learning a language is really more like a journey. It doesn't have to feel like school or work. Savor your experience with learning and enjoy every step along the way. And for even more tips on learning efficiently, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description.